So our next speaker is uh, Kathleen uh, Zeglinski, and uh, it, she's from uh, CSL. And I feel grateful that she's able to join us from the other side of the globe. So welcome, Kathleen. Hi, can you see my slides okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, um, I'm Kathleen and um, I'm an intern from the bioinformatics and AI team here at CSL in Australia. And today I'd like to talk to you about a software package we've developed called GMOVIS, which visualizes genomic variation and gene editing events. But before I do that, I'd just like to start with a little bit of background. And that is that genetically modified organisms are increasingly common in preclinical pharmaceutical research. But when we edit DNA to make a genetically modified organism, so for example, inserting a new sequence of interest into a genome, there are often a lot of off-target effects. And so before we can use a GMO in any sort of further research, it really needs to be characterized. But this characterization process generates a really large amount of sequencing data. And so if we want to interpret these modifications, whether they be on or off target, in a biologically meaningful context, visualization is really, really essential. The problem with this though is a lot of existing visualization tools tend to focus mostly on numeric data, but for genomic characterizations and describing um, a lot of these variations that we're talking about, it's the higher level information that's generally a bit more important. So we're talking about things like how many of our inserts have been integrated and where into the genome this has occurred. Currently, a lot of this is visualized manually by dragging little shapes around in PowerPoint or fiddling with IGV screenshots. And that's quite time consuming. It's not reproducible and it often doesn't look that great. So to kind of deal with this problem, we've developed GMOVIS to quickly and easily describe this information using CIRCOS plots. So um, on the right-hand side here, you can see an example of a plot produced by GMOVIS. And I'd just like to kind of quickly talk you through what you see here and what it all means. So on the right-hand side of this circle, we have a sector that represents a region of chromosome 17. We've got some gene labels and a genomic axis, although I did have to remove the coordinates for um, like confidentiality, but let's just pretend that they're there. And basically that kind of tells you where on chromosome 17 in particular we're looking. On the left-hand side here, you can kind of see an inserted sequence. We've got these 15 little arrows all kind of head to tail around the circle. And what that tells us is we've got 15 copies in tandem inserted into our genome. You'll notice that they all point the same way, so they've all been inserted in the same orientation, and they're all the same color, which means they're the same insert, they're exactly the same sequence. Around the outside, we've got an axis, which kind of gives us an idea of the scale of this integration event. And then if you follow this little link here that connects the two sectors, that will tell you exactly where into chromosome 17 this integration event has occurred. Finally, this little kind of squiggly plot thing that you see here on chromosome 17 is actually the sequencing coverage data for this particular region of the chromosome. And by including this in our plot, what we're able to see is that here we've got a little drop off in the coverage, which indicates that there's a deletion at the integration site. So although this diagram might seem a little simple at first, it is just a circle after all, but it does contain a large amount of high level information, all summarized into one little plot. So in terms of how we're able to generate a plot like this using GMOVIS, there's kind of three key steps. The first one is to initialize the plot. So that starts with reading in the sequence names and lengths. So, and then setting up the sort of layout of the plot. So that is that each sequence we want to visualize gets its own little sector around the circle. And we need to set up that layout. Optionally, in this step, if we want to, we can add in some labels and some coverage information, as was done for the diagram I showed previously. And once we finish this initialization, we can then move to add tracks which contain our data. And that can be higher level data, such as features in the genome. So that could be things like exons, genes, integrated sequences, etc as well as any sort of numeric data that we might want to visualize alongside these features in the form of a line graph or a scatter plot. We can add as many tracks as we have the space for. And once we're finished with that, we can then add a few little touches like legends and write out our image file. 
But beyond this sort of more flexible track by track approach, we also have convenience functions for some more common use cases, such as the insertion diagram function, which as the name suggests, plots insertions into the genome and was used to show, um, to produce the diagram on the previous slide. One other thing that I will kind of quickly touch on for this slide is that everything is integrated with the Bioconductor project. So all of our plotting functions, which you can see here in blue, they make use of the Bioconductor G-Ranges um, kind of data structure, which means that you can easily plot the results of your Bioconductor analyses using the GeneRavis package. So in terms of the actual code that we use to create a plot, this is the same plot you saw earlier. And on the left-hand side here, we now have the code that was used to generate it. So as is often the case with things like this, um, getting the data into R and into the correct sort of format is the most tedious part. So what we've got here is we're kind of setting out our little region of chromosome 17 that we want to visualize, reading in the coverage data so that we can plot it on the right-hand side here and then filling in a little bit of information about our integration event so that we can plot these little arrows on the left. But once we've got this information in, generating the plot can be done in as little as one line. And of course, because it's done using R code, it's reproducible, but also um, if we want to come back later and make some simple little changes, it's relatively easy to do so compared to if we produce this kind of visualization manually. So I'd now kind of like to take you through how we've used GeneRavis in our team to visualize a complex transgenic mouse model and kind of produce a summary of something that was relatively a long process in one slide. So here in the upper right-hand corner, we've got the whole genome represented around this circle. And we've plotted the coverage in this sort of aqua blue color, which allows us to see, because it's relatively flat and constant, that our sequencing process and our genome assembly have gone relatively smoothly. And because of that, we know that the rest of the diagram is pretty trustworthy. What you'll notice is chromosomes 15 and 17 are highlighted here. And that's because that's where the particular integration events have occurred in this model. Each of the insects, A, B, and C, have their own color, which allows us to easily identify them. And as I kind of touched on earlier, within each of these individual diagrams, we have a lot of contextual information with labels, with coverage data, that kind of give us a bit more of an idea of each of these events. But not only do we have these events kind of separate, because we're using circles, and we're able to fit a relatively large amount of information on one slide, we can get a complete picture of all the modifications made to this transgenic mouse in one digestible and attractive diagram. And of course, because this is based on existing sort of CERCOS frameworks, you can add as much extra data as you like. Of course, maybe it's better sometimes to keep it simple. We've heard a lot of great talks about that, but um, you may want to add some extra data. So some scatter plots, you can add links between regions of the genome, or even just something as simple as a little rectangle or highlight on a particular sequence that you might want to draw attention to. So really, gene movies can be used in many different facets of the pharma industry, but it especially shines when you want to describe how foreign sequence has been integrated into the genome. So some situations where we've used it are like cell line development or transgenic animal model um, kind of like characterization, but there's many, many other applications. And really, in terms of where it fits into your analysis workflow, you can use it during your analysis process to kind of get a handle on the data you're producing. But I think most importantly, as I showed on the previous slide, it's really useful at the end of an analysis to kind of create these big picture summary visualizations that can communicate a relatively complex modification in an easy way. And we've integrated some of these visualizations into our R Markdown reports to help us communicate these bioinformatic characterizations to life scientists. So just to wrap up, hopefully I've convinced you today that circular plots can have, be a really great way to represent all sorts of genomic variations. And that's something that's becoming increasingly important in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, the GMOVIS package makes it really easy to generate these plots thanks to its tight integration with Bioconductor. And that's where you can find the package if you're interested in downloading it by following this link or simply by Googling GMOVIS. Um, so just quickly, um, I need to thank everyone from CSL Global Research Data Science, 
as well as the undergraduate research opportunity program under which I was funded to complete this work. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks. Uh, we don't have time for questions, so all the questions will be sent to the Slack channel.